You and I got to learn to see it before my body gets involved. I see my day before my body gets involved. I see my relationships get better. I see that meeting with the boss or with the company. I see that sales meeting. I see it. I see God's best before I even get there. Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Welcome to Scott Voss Painting Today. Love it if you give the, those that are watching us on podcast, vidcast, a big hand clap for joining us as we today are going to paint your best life ever. As I'm painting here today, it's important to me that you see on the inside what we're going to be talking about painting on the outside, because what's in you is going to come out of you into your life. I want you to see with me now what a great, amazing day looks like. What does tomorrow look like for those of you out there? I want you to see you get up in the morning and just some some nice brush strokes of just the joy of the Lord flooding your soul. You got some peace that takes away any of your stress and worry. I'm seeing right now, I'm going to paint down that God is behind me. He's with me all throughout the day. He's making a table before my enemies. Man, the favor of God is upon me. It's a blessed, a prosperous, joyful, amazing day. I want you to paint up some relationships now in your life. What does that look like? Some great relationships right? Some new friendships maybe happen. Maybe some of your current relationships in your life, maybe there's some forgiveness. Oh, a dab a little forgiveness in there. Forgiveness for you and for them. Ooh, it begins to look good. And those of you that are married, what does a great marriage look like? We're going to put in some, some passion back into that. Oh, some God's love that's in there. Well, what, what does your spouse look like? What things have changed in them as we tap that? Oh, that's starting to look good. Some things that you could change about you. You begin to do life together and experiencing life. You got some great interests and things coming alive. Ooh, that's exciting. Those of you that maybe aren't married, but you desire for that special one to come into your life, what do they look like? What are they, what, what's about them? What, what characteristics? Oh, there you go. They love God. They're in God's house, right? They're motivated. They're loving, they're giving, they're caring. Oh, you share some of the great interests that are important to you. And ladies out there, what does he look, how tall is he? Is he normal height, like five foot four? Or do you like him tall? Is he five six, five seven? What do your relationship with your kids look like? As they get older in the teenage years, they honor their parents. Oh, let's put that in there. Oh, that looks good. All right, let's put it in there that they're motivated. They, they work hard. They give their best. Oh my gosh, they, 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 they go off into the world. They love God. They're in God's house. Ooh, they're beginning. That looks so good. And then we get into ourselves. Kind of the core that everything flows out of me. This is one of the most important paintings that you have. Begin to picture yourself. Ooh, he looks handsome. I get in there. Almost too handsome. Thank you, God, for that. Oh, it looks so good as I put confidence in there, right? Full of joy and God's peace in this. Wisdom. I'm going to dab a whole lot of wisdom in there. I need that. Oh, the mind of Christ begins to fill this one up. Oh, this is so good. I'm loving this. And the picture that you have about yourself is what people begin to see about you. And so the picture that you have in your mind is creating your own. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap. And then you end up with just an epic oil painting. (laughs) What I won't do for you all I had to have an oil painting made. Holly's so excited to hang this above the bed in the bedroom. This is going to be great. Oh, she can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Amen, amen. So today, hold on, i got to get my... He's all messed up. And he's, all right, get in there. It's upside down. Maybe it's right side up. Got it. Thank you so much. Yeah, throw it, yeah. Take it wherever you want. We're in our series on abundance. God's abundance. You are designed to abound, to have God's best flow into your life. And we're learning that the favor of God brings God's abundance to you and I. But in order for the favor to work, I've got to have faith. Everything works through faith. And so in order to get God's best, 
I've got to have a faith in me that draws it into my life. And so last week we talked about the importance of speaking it because faith cometh by hearing and especially my own words. And so as I begin to speak, not what I got, but what I want into my life, it begins to draw and steer my life right into God's best. And so I'm speaking to my mountains to get out the way. I'm speaking for healing into my body. I'm speaking into great things to happen in my relationships. My words go forth and begin to take me to God's best. But today we talk about what I would say might even be more important than the words that you say. Yeah, we got to speak it. But I believe it's so important that we learn to see it. That I have to first see. Oh, yeah, somebody either give the Lord a hand, clap and honk. I first got to see it on the inside of me. And then it begins to become on the outside of me. The Bible says that what's in me flows into every area of my life. And so we have to get a new Bob Ross type painting on the inside of us, of our future. I want to see blessings. I want to see prosperity. I want to see happiness and joy and peace. I don't care what my parents painted on the inside of there in me or in you or teachers painted. I care what God said that my picture needs to be. And so we got to learn to see it on the inside of us. And then it begins to materialize on the outside of us. Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. So how smart you are and how wise you are and what your SAT scores are and your IQ is, isn't as important as the ability to picture it. There's a whole lot of people out there that are smarter than me, but that's all right. All I need is to have a picture of what God has for me, and I can break through any type of boundary or any barrier that the world tries to put upon me. And the same thing for you, getting the proper picture, right? And we are visionary people. We, we picture stuff all the time. We watch TV and movies, and we picture, we read books, right? If I say horse, everybody in here, you see a horse. I say cat, instantly you see a cat. I say dog, you see your ex-girlfriend. Whatever I say, <laughs> whatever I say, instantly becomes a picture. I want you to realize that the picture that you put on the inside of you is so powerful, it can change a behavior. It can break off an addiction. It's something that I've been using a good portion of my life when I'm not doing something. And you know how you have those habits that you just keep doing it the wrong way? What I discovered is, is I just have to repaint the picture of my mind. So, because when you get into a circumstance, what's in you just comes out of the picture that you've already painted comes out of you. You get in that addictive type circumstance that draws you in. It's because you've got the wrong picture in there that says, oh, I, I'm vulnerable. There's nothing I can do about it. It's an addiction. And so you enter back in. But if you simply replace that picture with a picture of self-control and how you're going to act and respond, that's what comes out of you. My thing was during sports... I was an angry little sports guy. In golf, oh, I would get some that. I would throw my golf club. Every golf game, at least, I would throw a club. I've thrown clubs in the water. I've thrown them in the trees, got them stuck up there. I was angry. About 15 years ago, the last time I ever threw a club was with Pastor Stephen Bloomfield. And I threw the club farther than I hit the ball. And then he tattles on me. My wife finds out. And she goes, you can't throw your golf club. You're a pastor. And I said, there's nothing in the Bible that says I can't throw my golf club. You can't tell me that. So I had to, I decided that I would, at night, I would re, I would picture myself when I made a mistake on the golf course, I would picture myself handling it differently. I pictured myself laughing about it. I pictured myself going, ah, come on, Scotty, be better. Be better, Scott. And I was amazed that the very next time I golfed, when I hit a bad, bad a shot, I just laughed and I went, come on, Scott, be better. And I found out how much more I enjoyed the game of golf in life. And all I had to do was put a new picture. I would get angry on the road. I was quite the angry little driver, right? And so I had, as a pastor, because I have I Love My Church on the back, and it doesn't look good if I'm waving one finger out the window. And so I had to get a new picture in me so that when somebody cuts me off, I just go, I see myself go, get on in there, you big dummy, right? I just say, right? And I had, I had, so when things happen, I just pull out a new picture that just comes out of me. You have the ability to see yourself throughout the day and at night when that storm comes. Do I respond like David did, right? Am I the one that says, hey, giant, you ain't going to win because God is for me and it doesn't matter what's against me, right? You got a new picture. When the storm comes, I go, peace, be still. I don't stress out. I see myself full of peace, 
right? No anxiety and no worry. I replaced the old picture. I Bob Ross it, and I put a new picture on the inside of me. I like to have a picture for like when I know something's probably going to happen. And as a pastor, I have to make sure that I get the right picture in my mind so that I respond correctly. And one of the things I know, I follow the laws of the land, just so you all know. I honor our governor. And so if I go in a restaurant or if I go into a store, I, I, I mask up because that's, that's what he says to do. And so I honor that. But I'm 51 years old and I'm a man, so I don't have a great memory. And I can't tell you how many times I get all the way to the door and I'm like, ah, I forgot my mask. And I have to go all the way back to the car and get the mask. But I know... Now, I don't wear a mask outside, and whether you do or not, that's up to you. But I, outside, I don't wear one. And, but I had to prepare myself because in case somebody goes off on me for not wearing a mask, I had to have a right response, right? Because when people attack me, sometimes Pastor Scotty doesn't do right. So I had to be ready. I had to Joel Osteen this. So I painted a little picture. <laughs> I Joel Osteen. I had, to, I had it all prepared because I didn't want to make the news, right, for being a Karen or a Joe or whatever I would be. I didn't want to be that. So we were in San Diego, and in this place, there's just a little lobby. Everything's outside except for a lobby. You take your elevator to go upstairs, and they ask that you wear a mask in the lobby, right? And so I'm great. I'm wearing my mask. I'm doing great. And uh, I went and got coffee in the, for all of my family. So I had five coffees at the carrier, and then I had breakfast sandwiches in the hand, right? And so I had the keys, and I had to get the lock. And, and so I get in the lobby, and I get up, and I push the elevator with the, with, with the, with the thing, and all of a sudden the door opens, and here comes a, an, an older lady all masked up, and she saw me without a mask. I forgot to put it on, and she went off on me. You'd have thought I kicked a baby seal right in front of her. I was the worst person in the world. She began to tell me how bad I was and horrible, right? And I just took that picture and I said, I am so sorry. You're right. I apologize. I wear my mask. I had all the coffees. It didn't matter. She just kept hammering and hammering. She called me a murderer, said that I, I didn't care about anyone but myself. And I'm like, I do. You should know what I do. And she says, she's just telling me what a horror, just horror. And then it comes a point though for me where the picture that I brought, I began to see new pictures. And I know myself that as soon as I see it, I have a split second to cast that picture down before I do it because I saw myself grab her mask and snap it right back on her face. I saw it. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I had the self-control and I cast that down. And then I saw the picture of me grabbing her mask and going, I got your mask, I got your mask. And then, hush, sorry, sorry, I apologize. But I was good. And I just simply got in the elevator. I let the door close. Well, I just kept apologizing. But then I was like, yeah, as they're going up, I go, well, that didn't work. Like, she's mad. I'm frustrated. We're all mad. That was not a good picture. And so I'm a storyteller. I have a great imagination. So I began to craft a new picture of how I was going to try and respond. And I wanted it to be joyful. And I wanted it to be fun and exciting. And I wanted us all to walk away happy. So three weeks later, which have been this week, I pull in the parking lot, I get out, and I'm on the phone, right? So I'm never going to remember a mask when I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone, I walk all the way, I get off the phone, I get to the door, a lady with a mask walks out, and I go, oh, I forgot my mask. And then I went, wait a second, I didn't even bring a mask. I left the mask at home on my nightstand. Now I got to drive all the way home. And just then the little door opens, and out comes a masked up lady, and she looks at me, and she goes, are you kidding me? You don't have a mask on? And I smiled at her and I go, what is going on? What's going on with all the masks? Everybody's got masks on. I don't, what in the world's going on? And she goes, what are you talking about? I go, Matt, I said, I've been in Gulu, Africa on a missionary trip since January. I land and everybody's wearing masks. She goes, you don't know? I go, I don't know. She goes, you don't read the news? I go, there's no news in Gulu, Africa. She goes, you got to wear a mask. I'm like, what? She said, COVID. I go, co who? She goes, Corona. I go, the beer? She goes, no, not the beer. It's a disease. I go, you get a disease from drinking a beer? She goes, no, <coughs> not at all. She goes, it's killing people. You, you got to wear a mask. You got to put it on wherever you go. I go, I don't have a mask. She goes, well, I have one for you. She had one, a brand new one, all wrapped up. She handed it to me. I said, thank you so much. She goes, thank you. She goes, keep doing that missionary work. I go, I will. My picture 
brought me exactly what I need. I needed a mask. I was going to have to drive home. God's best with a picture brought me the blessing that I needed in the time I had. And this is what your picture will do for you. It'll bring you exactly what you need. And we need to learn to change our picture. I'm going to show you two things today, the power of a picture. But then I really want you to grab a hold of that in the time of impossibilities, God has already tried to get a picture on the inside of you. He's tried to bring one. You'll remember throughout this week as you're driving or doing something, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that God did give me a picture. Somebody spoke into my life a picture. I had a picture. I just discarded the picture. And finding out how important it is that we take the picture that God brings to us, that God brought it in the time to help us have faith so that I can step out in what God has for me. We see Gideon here in Judges uh, chapter, I believe it is, 7, and we're going to read 9 through 15. Gideon had just uh, whittled down his army. He had a big army, and now we're down to like 300 people. And we'll see here in the story that he's going against an insurmountable odds. It's like an infinite number. They say you couldn't even count how many camels were out there. It's like the sand of the sea. And so Man, you think about, yeah, God said I can have it, but that's, this is impossible, 300 versus all of that. that, that there's no way that, that that could possibly happen. And so during the night, the Lord said to Gideon, get up, go down against the camp because I am going to give it into your hands. Now, God already knows, but we see here in the story that Gideon is going, God, no, this is not going to happen. This is, this, no, this, this is impossible, as we always do. Right? Uh, I say always, a lot of times we do that. Well, God, that can't happen. There's no way that that could happen. And so here God is, is going, okay, I got to give him a picture. And so right, now, right away he says, if you are afraid to attack, which God already knows, then go down to the camp with your servant and listen to what they are saying. Afterwards, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and his servant went down to the outpost of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern people had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sands of the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. He said, I had a dream, he was saying, a round loaf of barley. Now, I could be wrong. I believe this is the first time we see in history the outback bread is brought to life. This is outback bread here. God's given us a picture. He saw outback bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hand. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, right, all of a sudden Gideon got a new picture. His old picture was one that this is impossible, it's never going to happen. And God says, I got to get a new picture in his heart. And as soon as he got that new picture in his heart, right, he heard the dream, he worshiped and bowed down to God. He returned to the camp of Israel, called out, get up, the Lord has given the Midianites into the camp, into our hands. How many people know that his circumstances have not changed, but he changed how he saw his circumstances? Right? Your circumstances, when you get the picture, may not change, but how you see them changes. Now I see a God that's going to deliver me. I see a God that's going to heal me. I see a God that's going to work out this problem in my marriage and my relationship. I see things differently, and as soon as I see it differently, I can step out into God's will. See, God's promise, God gave Gideon a promise, but how many people know that God's promises usually are not self-fulfilling, meaning they don't just happen? Most of God's promises are, there's th- we got to have the faith to activate it and then step out into it. The Israelites had the promise of a land flowing with milk and honey, but they got there and their spies went in, came back and put the wrong picture in their heart. Oh, the giants are too big. There's no way we'd be able to do that. So though God gave them a promise, they never stepped into the promise because they had the wrong picture in their heart. And oftentimes God gives us a picture of what we're supposed to have, no stress and peace and happiness and fulfillment and blessings in our life. And we're like, well, how come I don't get the promise? Because we have to get a picture on the inside of us of the promise so that we can step out and do some laps around our Jericho and experience the best. There's that, come on, that, you got to activate that faith. And I activate and I build that, but that faith by taking the picture and I replace that picture and I see something differently. Because God's promises are his intentions. 
That's his intention. He intends for you to be blessed, to have a great life, he in, that's, to be healed. That's his intentions, right? But just because it's his intentions, without faith, it's impossible to get the promises of God. So he says, you got to build up the... See, my kids, I, my intentions are that they have a, uh, a roof over their head, they can go somewhere, it's nice and air-conditioned, that my intentions are that there's food available, the pantry and the refrigerator is full. But if I got home today and they're sitting out in the middle of the 183-degree temperature... And they're like, oh, Father, why did you forsake us? You have promised that you would have a covering over our head and a cool place for us to lie down. Oh, Father, my belly is empty. Why have you not fed me? Where is my food? Oh, Father, you have left us out here to die. I'd be like, hey, dummy, go inside, make a sandwich. It's all available. I put everything that you need for life and godliness is available for you. It's time that you step in and have the faith and knowing that it is in the pantry. What if it's not in the pantry? Step out and see that it is in the pantry. That same thing for you. It's in the pantry. God's got everything that you need. But many Christians, right, they're waiting for the promise just to come in. But it's not until you get a picture to build up your faith that you can step into that. And so we got to learn to see things, to begin to see things up ahead, get a picture. Because guess what? You are a, Gideon was this, Gideon was one picture away from his promise. How many people know that you're a picture away from your healing? You're a picture away from your blessing. You're a picture away from throwing that depression medication away. Is there an amen anywhere out there? You're a simple picture away of seeing some things different in your life. If you can see it, you can have it. Right? I encourage you to do like I do. When I go to bed, I'm seeing my next day. Right? I don't just arrive at my next day. I've already seen it. Right? I've already visualized my great day. I know this week is amazing. I've already seen my week. Right? So you got to see an incredible day. Paint that picture. Right? Paint, paint, paint your boss's favor coming in. Paint the, your business just, just exploding with business. You just begin to see your marriage and the passion coming. You, you see that person that God has for you, right? You begin to see these things, right? Because if we live a life without vision, the Bible says, where there is no vision, things perish. Our dreams go away. I want us to be a visionary church that we're constantly seeing things up ahead. I've seen, even today, I already saw the noon service, my favorite service. I saw people getting saved. I saw people get delivered. I see this. I saw this a long time ago. See, many people, they get to the moment, and they only see what's in front of them. See, I saw this moment way back here. This is where I saw it, right? And that way, I brought into that moment exactly what I needed. If I just get to the moment, no. See, highly successful people, they're able to see up ahead. Jack Nicholson said this. He said, I see every shot in my mind before my body gets involved. I love that. I see it before my body. You and I got to learn to see it before my body gets involved. I see my day before my body gets involved. I see my relationships get better. I see that meeting with the boss or with the company. I see that sales meeting. I see it. I see God's best before I even get there, right? I saw this, right? I saw, I see me and Holly at 120 years old. She's still hot as can be. She's still trying to have babies with me. Amen. Come on. 120. I see it. I see my, my children's 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 children being blessed. I see me leaving a legacy, me and Holly, of the difference that we have left on this earth. I see living where Bob Church having the Phoenix Sun Stadium. I see us having a Phoenix yeah. campus. That's what I see. See, you've got to learn to see the impossible. Gideon had to see <coughs> the impossible. He had to see it. Anyone can see average, ordinary. Well, I'm just going to retire and try and live on my, my, my little bit that I get. Yeah, you can see that. Or you can see a breakthrough happening with a limitless God. I don't like to see ceilings in my life. I always think big. I dream big. We got to be a church that sees so big, so large. Well, I don't know if I ever, blah, 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 blah. Well, then you won't blah, 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 blah. And you can't see it. You'll never have it. Begin to go to bed and picture that marriage, that spouse, those finances. Picture that business. Picture writing that book, that invention. Every night of my life, I go to bed picturing my future. Throughout the day, I'm picturing my future. My kids, I saw them successful that they are having today 
25 years ago. I already saw it. I already saw it. Everything that I'm experiencing with my children, my teenagers, you know, they try and paint a picture. That's what the world does. The world tries to give you a horrible picture. Oh, the teenage years. Oh, get ready. I'm like, I've been ready for the teenage years for 20 years. I was already picturing my kids being obedient, obeying their parents and loving their parents and being an encouragement to us and helping around. And I'm able to ask them to do something. They do it. I saw it a long time ago. And that's what I experience. See, what are you going to experience? Depends on what picture you allow to come out of you. What picture you paint on the inside of you. And I want you to know that when the impossible things come, God's already given you a picture that you needed to be meditating on. Holly got pregnant. Of course, that's all we did. And so, <laughs> no, I just, I just walked by her and looked at her. And she goes, oh, got a baby, got a kick. And so it's just the way, I, yeah, no, it's crazy. And uh, right away, she says, she began to tell me about a dream. And she had it almost every night. She'd have a dream and the baby's hands, and she's like, the hands were perfect. And when she's telling me, you know, as a man, I'm just like, well, big deal, okay. I dreamed that, that I had pizza for legs. You know what I'm saying? She said, no, the hands are perfect. I go, okay, well, he'll be a hand model then, I guess. I don't know. That's great. And then later in the pregnancy, I think it was around six months, five months, somewhere around then, uh, she came home with just a horrific doctor report that the baby was, it was no good. It, was, it wasn't good in, the, in there. And she crying and I'm crying over the doctor's report. And then she goes, but the, the hands were perfect. Now, here's the thing. With this particular thing, one of the things that they look at the ultrasound for is they look to see if the hands are perfect. Because if the hands are perfect, then the baby is healthy uh, with this uh, diagnosis. And so she goes, we, God told us the hands were perfect. And so we said, we're going to go on God's picture, not a man's picture. The hands being perfect is what we painted on the inside. Of, and we began to just pray. We began to just see the hands perfect and the baby perfect. And we got done. And I said, I'm calling the doctor. We're getting another report because the doctor's report is going to line up with God's report. I'm going to see it right now. So I called the, I called the doctor's office up and the nurse said, well, she said, well, we can't, we're not going to run another test. We already have the results. I said, I want another test. She said, well, no. I said, I'm, I'll, go, I'll go somewhere else, but I'm going to get another test. She goes, well, you know, the insurance company won't pay. I said, that's fine. I don't care. I'll pay. I said, I'm getting another test. She's like, fine. All right, we'll give you a test. So we got a test, and then they called us back and goes, yeah, the baby's perfectly fine. Right? That's how God works. <laughs> Whose picture are you going to believe? I believe God's picture. God gave us a picture for that child knowing what? That there was going to be a Gideon type of possibility up ahead so that we would build our faith up for the miracle and the healing that God had. This is what God wants to do in your life. He's given you pictures all the time for those impossible things. It's important that we don't shrug them off and we just cast them aside. Well, God gave me this big book, but I don't think I'll ever be able to do it. If you don't see it, you'll never be able to do it. You're like the Israelites who say it's too big. It'll never happen. But if you can be like Joshua, right, and Caleb, and say, wait, I've got a different picture. I see ourselves in the promised land. I see it already done. I see that book written. I see publishers coming my way. I see that invention. I see that business. I see that idea. I'm going to have a new picture. I'm going to Bob Ross this thing. It's going to be strong on the inside. Oh, I see myself happy. I see me throwing that depression medication away. I see my body healthy and whole. I see that diabetes gone. I don't have no diabetes. I already saw this into my future. It's gone in the name of Jesus. I ain't got no back problem. I see my body healthy and whole. My body, you got to line up with the picture that God gave me. By his stripes, I've been healed. And I go to bed every night and I picture my body healthy. I picture my child that's gone the way we're away. I see them turning around and coming back to God. I see this marriage restored. I see God bringing the love of my life into my life. I see the life that God has for me. And I painted up a beautiful picture. Come on, somebody in this house. It's time that we stand on God's picture for our life. Stand on his promises. Paint it up wherever you go. Paint tomorrow up and make sure it's a beautiful day. Paint 2020 up. It's got to be an incredible 2020. I've already seen my 2020. And how many people know it's glorious? 
It's amazing. It's abundant. It's blessed. Oh, everything is so good. Everything around me could be falling apart, but my 2020 is going to be epic and amazing because the Bible says people fall, things fall on my left and my right, but nothing touches my home or my household. That's the picture. Come on in this house. What's your picture? What's your picture? Thank you so much for watching today. We want to make sure that we secure your eternity. Eternity is a simple choice. It simply means I believe in Jesus Christ, that He died and raised from the dead. It doesn't matter. You, you may think, well, I'm not good enough and I haven't lived my life right. Jesus died for all of your sins. So simply say this prayer with us. Dearly Father, I ask you right now, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I am saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for all my sins and was raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. We'll see you next time.